there is a big discourse going on in the world internationally amongst higher education institutions about how we upskill our learners in digital citizenship, which means like ethical and capable uh, use of technologies. This includes everything from your um, Zoom meeting to Genially, H5P, interactive LMSs, uh, all the way through to generative AI, and uh, it is unending, right? So this session is targeted for you as the teacher. How do we use technology to support our teaching and their learning? Today I'm going to use Slido. This is one that you can incorporate into PowerPoint. So for those of you who teach using PowerPoint, Slido offers um, a plugin to PowerPoint and we can run a quiz or a cloud um, activity to engage learners. And the whole point is that your learners are doing stuff, right? You want them to be doing to learn because we know that they're that their learning is more deeply embedded when it's not didactic, when they are actually having to do something, having to process information and act on that processing. So Kahoot is, is one, but it's behind a paywall. Uh, Slido's freely available. Here's how it looks for the learner. Uh, this took me about less than 10 minutes to set this up. And then it automatically provides that QR code and the link and the password for the student. It will bring up their, the range of answers that you get to that. It um, builds on a pedagogy of play, establishes um, existing knowledge or preferences of your learner group. And then you get your answers. You can use leaderboards. There's all kinds of ways that you can use this to optimize their engagement and wake people up. Now, these are high engagement, high immersive learning experiences that the students are getting. That's really the pinnacle in terms of technology and engaged, engaging your learners. They do take quite a lot of effort to set up and a lot can go wrong, right, for you as a teacher. You do need to be aware that to reach that pinnacle, uh, it takes a bit of work. That can be stressful even for those of us who are very experienced. Padlet's not very expensive. What's great about Padlet is that you can really just easily pull a lot of information from all over the place together and you can get students to to grade these resources to pull them themselves to bring them in and go you know oh yeah have you seen this youtube video on blah 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 or have you seen this policy or regulation and there's heaps of youtube videos out there that are explainer videos now this is the teaching that just happens to be recorded basically the explainer video is much better than a wall of words, but we can be even more strategic to make the most out of uh, using videos for learning. One of the ways that we might do that is to get the learner to repeat back. Now, what I mean by this, you can see in this video here around uh, sign language. First, I model to the viewer the sign language. Then I say to them, look, now it's your turn to practice and I'm going to take away some of that scaffolding or some of that support for your learning so that you've got a chance to do something, right? Like you've got to remember, you've got to process and you've got to work with me to embed your own learning on this topic. That's what the repeat back actually achieves for the viewer. So that's a bit more engagement for your learner and you're getting more bang for your buck out of your video if you uh, do that. There's also the follow along method. Dr. Nikki is a great example of scaffolding learners by showing them how to do it, right? And we saw that a little bit in the Crutches Explainer video, but uh, difference here with Dr. Nikki's one is that you've got the opportunity to draw with, draw alongside Nikki to learn anatomy. The pinnacle in terms of videos for learning 
would be the interactive film. The learner is watching a video and up comes a quiz question or up comes a button to click on to learn more about or to um, explore. They're not just sitting back and watching and going, oh, yeah, cool. They've actually got to press buttons. They've got to explore things and they've got to find a way forward. When it comes to videos for learning, the literature suggests that learners these days tend to like somewhere between 30 seconds and four minutes for a video for them to watch, right? If it's a, just a didactic follow along video, then really your sweet spot is the first 30 seconds and um, it goes downhill after that until people just chime, you know, they've had enough. After four minutes, you, there's not very many people watching. There are a few caveats to that. Occasionally you have an amazing uh, material such as this video where people will watch all the way to the end because they want to know and they actually want to know to be able to do something, right? They want to follow along and do stuff. So if you've got those repeat backs or those follow alongs uh, that you're using in your video, then you're going to get higher engagement. If you can make it clear to the learner in the first 30 seconds that what you're going to cover and why they should continue to watch, then you're going to get that higher viewing across um, and, and higher learner engagement more generally. Uh, so the take home messages around timing are that the more um, sophisticated the technology and the more en engagement that's required of your learners means the more time that you're gonna have to probably put into it yourself. There are some fantastic technologies out there that do take very little time for you to orient yourself to, such as the Slido that I showed earlier, and um, that it's a big investment usually for you to learn the technology yourself and to have the courage to try it out, knowing that something might go wrong in front of your learners and that that can be pretty stressful, but having that courage and just giving it a go and then getting more familiar with the technology is going to serve your learners, right? Like the whole point is that we want to optimize their learning. So if we can engage with technology to optimize their learning, um, then it's going to take a pretty big investment from us, but we'll see the fruits of that labor Best wishes for your own engagement with learners through technology. Cheers.